In this demo heavy module, we're going to take a look at the ARM template used in managed application deployment packages. Now the ARM template is named main template.json, thus the name of this module. My name is David Starr, and if you are building managed applications, one of the required files for the deployment package is main template.json. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover in this module. Firstly, we're going to see how ARM templates work within the Azure portal, because that's a great place to get started with them if you're not familiar. Next, we're going to look through the actual nomenclature, the structure of an ARM template so that you become familiar with that. And finally, we're going to see a very cool tool called ARM TTK, which helps us in testing our ARM templates. I'm going to talk just a little bit about ARM templates in general before jumping into a demo. First of all, these are considered config as code. That means these are JSON files that specify details about Azure resources that we'd like to deploy. And we can deploy them in various ways using PowerShell, the Azure CLI, or managed application. You can also deploy with an ARM template through the Azure portal. And we're going to have a look at what that looks like in just a moment. With that, let's jump into ARM templates in the Azure portal. Here we are in a resource group that contains our team's SaaS Accelerator project. Now, this is something that you should be interested in if you are learning about SaaS applications. But for us today, all we're going to do is export some of the resources here as an ARM template so that you get a look at how we can do that through the Azure portal. Now, the first thing to note is that over here under the automation heading in the left hand menu of the resource group, we could say export template here. If we did that, it would create a template for deploying all resources in this resource group. Now, I'm not going to do that because I want a little bit simpler template to work with. So I'm going to export just this key vault here. And in order to do that, I select it, come up here to export template. And with that, it takes just a moment for this thing to generate. There we go. And note that we can see the structure of the file here in the left-hand side. There are optionally some variables that we could declare inside here. And then finally, the resources that get deployed by this ARM template, which include a key vault, an application secret, and a database connection. Now, these aren't actually held in the ARM template, so don't worry, you're not leaking any sort of secrets. It just creates a secret for each one of these. Now, with this template, we can do a couple of things right here inside the Azure portal. First of all, I can keep a library of these in Azure. However, what makes the most sense is to download this to your local machine and tweak the ARM template to best suit your needs. Maybe you would want to rename the parameters, for example, to something more intuitive. And then to actually use version control to manage this document because it's just a document. That's where the config as code comes from. And it becomes important to version our ARM templates as our infrastructure evolves. I can also deploy using this ARM template, and I could edit it before I deploy. Note it will create a new key vault in the resource group that we specify, and we can give it a name because this is an input parameter to the ARM template, so it's asking us for that input parameter. With that, let's head into our next demo. In this demo, we're going to take a look at the structure of the ARM template that we might export from the portal. Now, the one we're going to look at is simple. It's, it's a very simple ARM template that does nothing more than deploy a storage account. But let's take a look at it. So we've got our parameters, which come in as input parameter definitions, and they have a type associated with them. There could be various types. They could even include objects or secret information like a password. Note that location is a required parameter in all cases because the ARM template does need to know where to deploy your resources. 
So with that, let's jump down to the variables section. As you can see, uses the parameter of storage count name prefix, and then a function, an ARM template function, that actually returns a unique string so that we know that our storage account name is gonna be unique across Azure. Finally, we look at the resources themselves. Now, this should typically be an array of several resources for any sort of complex solution, but for our example, it's just a storage account is all we're deploying. If we were deploying more than that, you would see additional resources in this array. There can be a lot of complexity in the resources section of an ARM template and for specific settings like the properties. If you have the schema declaration at the top, you can get prompted for the acceptable properties of this resource. Alternatively, check documentation for all of the flags and parameters that we might set on the resource that we're deploying. That was a quick trip through ARM templates. I don't want to spend too much time here because if you're watching the managed application course, odds are you're somewhat familiar with ARM templates already. So with that, let's jump into our last demo. This last demo will show a tool called ARM TTK, which is extremely useful in building both ARM templates and it turns out create UI definition files, which we covered in the previous module of this course. So let's take a look at ARM TTK. Firstly, ARM TTK is an open source project that you can find on GitHub and it's actively maintained. But what does it do? It essentially runs unit tests against your ARM template or against your create UI definition files such that you can find errors inside them if they exist and remediate those errors before trying to publish your publication package, which is going to contain those two very important files. All right, let's take a look at using ARM TTK. And it turns out it's a command line PowerShell tool. So I'm gonna bring up PowerShell here. I'll bump up my font size a bit. And I'm gonna set the target directory as a variable just to keep my command line somewhat simple. So what I mean by this is that we're gonna be passing packager into the ARM template command and it looks into this folder for the relevant artifacts, the create UI def and the, and the ARM template, main template.json. So the next command I'll run is to import the module inside the ARM TTK folder of this GitHub repository. So I've just pulled this down and I'm working directly within the Git repo on my local machine. So I'll import this module. And the last thing we'll do is actually run the tool. So that is test az template, and we pass in the path to our package directory, or what it calls a template path as a parameter. So I'll go ahead and enter, and note that we see we failed zero tests, and 31 tests were executed and passed. So if we come up to the top, it reads that we're validating the main template.json only. It's because I don't have a create UI definition in my package directory yet. The next thing we'll note is that there are names for every test that it executes or lines for each test that it executes. And it turns out that ours are all passing, which is great. Now let's see what happens when we add create UI definition to the folder that we're inspecting. So I'll just drop that create UI definition file into our folder and run again. This time we had 48 tests that ran. They did all pass. Let's see what it says up here. And this time it says validating create UI definition.json. Scroll down a bit. And we get to this line validating main template.json. Now though, what happens when 
one of these tests finds something that's invalid. Well, here's an example of that. I'm going to, in my main template.json, take out a parameter. So let's run with this setup. Now, I don't know if you saw that zip by, but there's some red text here. Outputs must be present in template parameters. This means that the storage account name prefix must be present in the ARM template because it's in the output section of create UI definition. So if we fix this and rerun, this time all of our tests passed. Now, what about create UI definition? Now, I know this is a module on ARM templates, but this tool is so useful. I just wanted to cover the create UI def piece. Note I'm going to comment out or get rid of this output parameter and create UI definition. Now I'm going to clear my screen. Let's run again. And you may have noticed that red text zip by parameters without default. That is in the ARM template. We could have a default, but ours doesn't. That means that the output parameter must exist in create UI definition. Let's go fix our create UI def and run again. Finally, that time we passed all tests as you can see here. Here is a short URL for ARM TTK to get you straight to that GitHub repository really quickly, aka.ms arm-ttk. And with that, let's go ahead and wrap up. This was a really quick module covering ARM templates, specifically how we use them in managed applications. We first looked at how to extract an ARM template from the Azure portal, which can be a very useful starting point for building out our main template.json. Next, we looked at the structure and nomenclature of an ARM template, a very simple one, just so that we understand the different sections of parameter variables and resources. Finally, we looked at ARM TTK. You got a tour of this tool, which tests both ARM templates and create UI definition files for correct syntax and to ensure they're error free. Thank you for joining us for another video from Mastering the Marketplace the learning library where technologists go to get their offer on the Microsoft Marketplace. For more videos, hands-on labs, and sample code, find us at aka.ms slash mastering the marketplace.